Coming up on the last FTC Open Alliance show for Decode, we have 23509 Robo Ribbits on the talk all about programming. I'm so excited to dive more into this. This team is utilizing block code as well, too. Uh, so it's great to get a different perspective from uh, uh, maybe some of the other teams we've talked to to showcase more of how they're going about that process, how a lot of teams can learn from it, especially if they're looking at getting their first autos going as well, too. There's a lot of great stuff to dive more into it. We'll talk more about uh, strategizing with your alliance partners for autonomous as well, too. Uh, Mark in the field as well for uh, different types of pathing and just their overall progress as they get ready for competition in just two short weeks. So let's learn more about Robo Ribbits coming up here on the FTC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all things FTC. Teams who are looking for inspiration in Decode can check out Animark's Robits Core Kit and FTC Starter Bot, which are designed with usability and accessibility in mind. And check out some of their new components suitable for any FTC robot. Head on over to animark.com to find solutions that fit your team. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Let's welcome on 23509 Rebel Ribbits coming in from uh, Georgia with so many awesome things to talk about, uh, ranging from uh, different things to autonomous. We're going to be looking at the field a bit more and how they're utilizing things and then talking about uh, some different uh, pathing as well, too. So a lot of great things to jump into. So uh, welcome, students. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Let us know what you do in the team, and let's hop right in to check out some of your progress. Hi, I'm Anna, the social media captain. Hi, I'm Peyton, the team captain. Hi, I'm Benny, and I do programming. So, most teams, if you're a rookie team, or even a regular team, you will end up starting in the smaller box, or sometimes even the bigger one. But if you're starting in the smaller box, you are going to probably want to drive forward. And whenever you do that, you get a ranking point, which will end up helping you through with your team and being a better alliance partner. If you're starting in the larger box, you will want to drive forward and that will give you another ranking point. And, but also, if you're starting right in that box, you could shoot. But sometimes you're the weaker or the stronger alliance partner. If you're the weaker one, you might want to wait a few minutes and then shoot after the other team. And then you can drive out of the box and still get that ranking point. And if you're in the smaller box, you can leave that box and you can stay in the box, shoot, and then drive out of the box and get another ranking point. But if you are super strong and you're doing great, maybe you've already shot your stuff and you are turning to the side and you're going to be collecting balls and then heading out of that box and parking. Or you might be doing the same thing and heading to the home human player area. So you could do that. Or you could shoot, leave your box, then you get your ranking point, go over and collect the balls. Then that's it. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you on here. So we're talking about like uh, alliance uh, or autonomous strategies for things, right? How do you think some of those conversations are going to go with your alliance partners for things? Like how how do you, would you go about uh, talking that through and figuring out who wants to do what and how that's going to work out? So our team keeps a board which has this year's game on it. And then we go and we grab a marker and each team is driving out what we do and like writing it out. And then with that discussion, we're like, that's how we decide what everyone's going to do. It especially makes it easier for the first few meets and even the main competitions. 
So for your team, uh, you know, I know this is always a rapidly changing thing. What are maybe some of the, the primary strategies you think that your team's going to accomplish uh, during a decode match? Okay. What do you mean, Mike? What are you planning to do? Autonomous mm -hmm. strategy. I mean, I think we're probably going to start from the small triangle, and then I see a couple different pathways depending on if we're the stronger or weaker alliance. If we are the weaker alliance, we'd probably shoot preloaded artifacts from the small triangle and then move out. We could potentially move forward to align with one of the spike marks for Telia, or if our alliance partner is going to be collecting off those spike marks, we can simply move laterally to get into the human player zone so we can load balls there at the beginning of Teleop and stay out of the way of the stronger robot versus if we are the stronger alliance partner we'll shoot our three balls and then align with one of the spike marks potentially later in the season when we're able to read the qr code we can use logic and if then statements to determine which hash mark or spike mark we go to depending on what the qr code says then collect those balls and shoot them back at our small triangle uh, then move to the side to get a, to get the ranking point for leaving the square and making sure to stay out of the way of all the other robots. I, I know we're going to dive a bit more into some of the specifics of autonomous in a little bit as well, too. Is there anything else, uh, Anna, that you wanted to cover in terms of what you're uh, talking about? No, sir. I think that's it. Okay. Well, let's bring in Peyton. Peyton, what do you want to go over uh, in regards to your progress and, and talking about? So I want to talk a little bit more about how to actually program these and our team does this a little more unique. We do it using block code. So it's really simple. And sometimes the simplest autonomous is the one that gets you points, a little like how Anna talked about. So here on screen, you can see I've got a couple different blocks of code and pretty much I'm just reversing the motors I need to get everything going the right direction. And then I'm going to start my shooter, because in this case, it would be for one that shoots balls in and then drives out. And then once I've done that, I can just drive out of the square. Can we show? Yep. Let me show. So as part of this code, the very first thing I do is reverse the motors for my robot. That goes into initialization. It just means the robot goes the correct direction. Then after that, into the if else, I'm going to put, basically start my shooter, right? I want to turn on power to my shooter and transfer wheels, whatever's getting it in there. After that, I just tell it to go for a certain amount of milliseconds. In this case, I'm doing 1,000 for one second of time that they're going. And I'm going to tell them to stop. And that's what did the shoot a ball. Next slide. Now that it's shot a ball, the next piece of this is to drive forward. To drive forward, I'm going to tell all four motors to turn on in a positive direction. And then I'm just going to tell it, OK, how many milliseconds do I want to move forward? I found that 1,000, again, made a nice amount because it got me clear out of the triangle that the judges can see. And then I'm just going to tell it, OK, now that you've driven that far, stop. That's all you can have to do. And now you have an autonomous that can score, and any team can do this. And you can push stop at any point in it if needed. So, so a couple of questions I just want to ask you, Payne, on this. Um, how has, like, your tuning process gone for this? Are you, are you finding you're just making slight adjustments to the blocks? Have you had to completely rewrite things before? Can you just walk me through a little bit on kind of how your process has been actually doing the block code? So for the code, we actually have had to find that some of our motors go at different speeds. So we have to add multipliers into how fast they're going to make it so the robot will drive straight instead of starting to angle. Otherwise, we've also, whenever we get to our competition, we like to put it on a practice field or the real field when we get a chance and actually try it and tweak it to be 
what you need because sometimes 1,000 forward is only 900 forward on another pick. So this process that you've gone through so far, is this something that, you know, based on what you've experienced and gone through, would you recommend other teams try this out? Or is this meant for a certain type of team, in your opinion? Who is this? Uh, who do you think uh, this type of code would be best uh, for to uh, implement for their team? So this type of code would be best for a younger rookie team. And it might also be best for a team who just needs an auto. Sometimes build takes forever and you're a couple days before a competition and you still want something. So I could see it being used in many ways. The other part of this is that it then could go into a more accurate drive by inch program that allows you to drive a certain distance instead of a certain amount of time or into a trajectory program to basically go to any point on the field. I love your point of that, that like, I think this is something that, you know, for teams is like, Hey, if you just, if you need to get something going, this can be a great option uh, for you for something like that. that. That's such a great thing to bring up uh, for this. What are maybe uh, for you uh, pain in particular, like what are kind of some of the next goals that you personally want to get done before your competition comes up in just a couple of weeks? So part of what I think I and our team too would like to get done is getting more of an autonomous and a more accurate one so that we're hopefully scoring at least three balls in autonomous and then working on some of our teleop functions as well for programming at least. I was say, last thing I want to ask you, does, does any of this block code translate into teleop mode for you at all or is that something completely different? So it actually does and we use, say, for instance, when I made my wheels turn on to get the code going, like to make the move, I then took that couple blocks and I put them right into our teleop program, into a, if this button, do this. So I'm using several of the same like blocks that then carry into it, even if I have to make adjustments to do them on two buttons or joysticks. Anything else that you want to cover all the pain or should we move it over to Benny and talk? Sure, so four more advanced teams that are using coordinate trajectory programs like Roadrunner or Petropathing. One approach we found super helpful is to mark the field with tape marks here. So for our current autonomous, our robot is starting on this tape mark, which represents where the center of our robot is. Go down on your knees. What? Go down on the field on your knees. There you go. So then we know that we can set the robot here if our center is about where that tape mark is, which helps us to get some rough points for planning out our autonomous. So we start here and then we turn, which is marked by these arrows. So we know that the robot is facing this way. So we know approximately the orientation we want to shoot. And then after that, we're driving here where we can turn and align with the hash mark. And we have the number, this is zero, our start, and then one, two, etc. So we know what order they're going in. So then this aligns with the first spike mark where we can collect, and then we'll return to this spot and shoot. And then if there's extra time, we can move here to align with further spike marks. Or later when we're reading the QR code, we have these three marks, which could represent part of our loop or if then statement. Based on our QR code, we can go to one of these three positions, depending on which spike mark of balls we need to collect, then return over here to this tape mark and shoot. And then of course, leave the starting area after we shot. So if looking at, at, at doing stuff like this, there's a few different, uh, I think, you know, really it doesn't matter if you're doing block code or if you're doing, you know, other types of pathing options for things, right? Like any teams can utilize something like this, but for, for you in particular on your team, um, what are maybe some um, like things that you've learned by going through this process so far that are like, Hey, um, I'm either going to improve upon or just things that maybe you didn't, you didn't experience before. Um, one thing we noticed was that, the odometry pods, it's very important to make sure they don't get hit or bumped or jostled because very small differences in those add up very, very quickly over the course of an autonomous period. And those errors are can exacerbate. So it's really important to make sure they have good contact with the field and they're in a place where they're not going to get hit and their wires are secure because that definitely has caused problems with us. If the wires get unplugged or if the pod gets jostled, 
in terms of having accurate position data, especially for the later steps of our program. Are you looking at doing anything to compensate for drift at all in odometry, um, like either utilizing the QR codes on the field or even like uh, PID or anything else like that that you might be able to implement? I mean, the main thing we've done so far is we've looked at setting KP functions, or if we know that the robot is going to overshoot by, let's say it will always go by about five inches past what we tell it to in the Y, then we can set that as a KP value so that we can account for that overshoot over the course of the program. Uh, anything else for, for your team that you want to uh, talk about and things that you either learned or advice for other teams or anything like that before we wrap up? I think a piece of advice to other teams is you can always try it even if it doesn't work out. Have an auto. Doesn't matter how good your auto is, right? And don't be afraid to use blocks. It's better to have that than anything. That's what you guys say all the time. So share something like that as well. Uh, you know, and we have we have a saying that, that we've used a lot of things of uh, fail fast, fail hard, right, in things. It's okay uh, to fail and learn uh, from things as well, too, because that, that's how you get better, right? Uh, people come, pe people uh, become complacent quite easily for things. So I'm glad to hear that you're uh, continuing your progress to go through learning from it as well, too. And uh, we can't wait to see, of course, how your competition ends up coming up in just a couple of short weeks as well, too. So uh, Ribble Riz, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about uh, these updates. It's great to talk about programming, too. We don't get to always dive into that as much here on the open line show uh, so we really appreciate that and we wish you the best of luck in your competition in just a couple short weeks thanks a lot thank you thank you thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos for over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Animark is your one-stop shop for all things FTC. Teams who are looking for inspiration in Decode can check out Animark's Robits Core Kit and FTC Starter Bot, which are designed with usability and accessibility in mind. And check out some of their new components suitable for any FTC robot. Head on over to animark.com to find solutions that fit your team.